Welcome to episode 12 of 3 plus 2 at 3, uh, in which I try out three original songs on you, uh, a cover song, and generally uh, an instrument of a Celtic nature. But this whole show is kind of going to be dedicated to my love of Irish music, with some songs that are, are kind of in that general direction. And uh, I'll start with this kind of anthemic one. It's kind of an Irish pub anthem. Someday, I hope a band can do this. A bunch of instruments and percussion and all that stuff. I just have to say by introduction, in Ireland, when you give a toast, you say the word slancha. S-L-A-I-N-T-E is the Irish Gaelic word. Help to the likes of you. Welcome, delighted that you came along. We are all ready and tuned up to give you some fun with the tunes and the songs. And all that we ask and we hope for, and all that we want of this night, come what may, is that for one evening. Health to the dancers. See how they jump as they kick up their heels. Hands at their sides with their feet are all stepping like mad to the jigs and the reels. And if you keep them going by clapping your hands and by tapping away at your toes. Well, what happens next? Well, I'm sure that the devil's the only pub anthem for you on a Wednesday. Hey, hey there, Lar. How you doing? Hi, John Bradfield, Fred Demick, Jeff T. Lander. Thanks again. All right. You know, in Irish music and in all kinds of music, uh, there are those songs that maybe get played just a little bit too much. We got Doug Guiled on today, and Doug feels the way I feel about this song. When you, if you ever mention Mustang Sally to Doug, there's people like perhaps myself when you mention Wagon Wheel. Maybe it's been played a couple too many times. But 
there, in Irish pubs, uh, there's a song called The Wild Rover, and it gets played a fair amount. And, uh, and so sometimes when songs get played a fair amount, you get tempted to do terrible things to the words. And that's what I've done with this one. And I needed a, I needed a very large number that, that rhymed with for sure, ignore, before. So in picking this large number for the lyrics of this parody song, I settled on 1,572,864. Now you may wonder, where does 1,572,864 come from? Well, I'll tell you. It used to be, maybe around 15 years ago, if you looked on a, a Waffle House menu, it said there were 1,572,864 ways to have your hash browns. And uh, it seemed like a really elegant number as a result. And by the way, you know, for about the last 15 years, I've been puzzling on how they came up with that number. And just this week, with a, uh, backed by about a three-page write-up I put together, I settled on how they got it. The key is don't think of it as 3 times 2 to the 19th power. Think of it as 12 times 2 to the 17th. But uh, uh, time does not permit going into the entire derivation of the number on this call. But if you message me, I can send you where I came, how I got it. Anyway, but I digress. I sing in this pub every Saturday night. And most of the time, it is my delight. But after rendition, 1,572,864 I never will play the Wild Rover no more And it's no name, never Now at this point in the song people go clap, 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 clap But I, you know, in Ireland the word F-E-C-K, feck a short E sound is not a cuss word, so be very careful the way you sing on it. You can go, and it's no, nay, never. For feck's sake, no, no, nay, never, no more. Will I play the wild rover? No, never, no more. Well, it gets on my nerves, it's driving me daft. Likewise, the bartender and half the wait staff. But I, there's one thing I know, and I know it for sure, that I never will play the Wild Rover no more. And it's no, nay, never, for fuck, no, no, nay. Stairway to heaven, I'll sing every word. And for a truckload of cash, I'll sing you free bird. But there is one request that I always ignore, because I never will play the wild rover no more. And it's no my money was sparse and the pub owner he threw me out of my arse I don't care what he says it can't be like before and I never will play the wild rover no more and it's no to do no nay never no more will I play the wild rover no never
If you want to, if you want to really understand the difference between feck and the uh, bad F word, uh, if you do a, a search on YouTube for a show called Father Ted, and you go Father Ted, Mrs. Doyle, cursing, you'll get one of the funniest sitcom scenes you ever want to see. That ex fully explains all of that. Hey Donna. And so, uh, so anyway, let me tell you a little story. So, um, I'm going to tell you a story about a little town in Ireland called Timalee. Eileen has relatives there, and we went to visit there in 2009. If you want to wear, know where Timalee is in Ireland, uh, get you a bottle of this stuff called West Cork Irish Whiskey, and, and right down there, Timalee is right on the bottle, uh, which I thought was really cool. And when we visited there in 2009, uh, we went to a place called Charlie's Pub, which was really a cool place because we happened on the night, they were having like your folk and song jam where people were bringing their music stands and their guitars and their binders of lyrics and stuff and getting together. And we just had a blast. They let us participate. Uh, they love to sing in Ireland. And so, shoot, it got to the point where the front door had closed. We were still drink, continuing to drink heavily. People were coming in and out the back door. And at about what I want to call point one five o'clock, uh, perhaps like two o'clock in the morning, the woman, the young woman who was letting me borrow her Casio keyboard uh, at times, looked at me and said, uh, do you know any Garth Brooks? And the next thing you know, I'm going. And then we're all. So next thing you know, the, this whole remainder of the pub full of people who knew all the words is, is caterwauling the dance by Garth Brooks. I had to say, I'm going to. Going into the evening, I did not see that coming. And after that, after that drifted out, the same young woman looked at me and said, do you know The Other Side of Town by John Bryan? And I said, The Other Side of Town by John Bryan? Wow, that's, that's like a bonus track. That's on Fair and Square. That came out like years before that. Um, boy. Uh, I think I could piece it together a little bit. And so I just couldn't believe that, that, that they would be that much into John Prine that they would not only know the real well-known songs like Paradise or Hello in there, but the ones that are like completely at the end of the catalog. So at any rate, so, so this song, uh, the cover song this week is a John Prine song requested. Uh, it helps me remember it. Remember, one of the best nights ever. And as John Bryan would introduce this song, I will too. There's absolutely nothing autobiographical contained therein. Why must you always seem to criticize me? Seems like everything I do just comes out wrong. Why don't you come on out and despise me so I could pack my bag and baby I'd be gone remember when you used to call me honey while well, I turn around and call you honey too 
You might think it's a joke, but it ain't funny to hurt someone who's so in love with you. A clown puts his makeup on upside down, so he wears a smile. Everybody's in this room with you just catching hell While my soul is drinking beer down the road with a spell You might think I'm listening to your grocery list But I'm leaning on the jukebox and I'm about half way there his makeup on upside down so he wears a smile even when he wears a frown you might think I'm here when you put me down but actually I'm on the other side of town I'm sitting in a chair just behind my ear playing dominoes and drinking some ice cold beer when you get done talking I'll come back downstairs and assume the body of the person you presume who cares a smart clown puts his makeup on upside down So he wears a smile even when he wears a frown You might think I'm here when you put me down But actually, I'm on the other side of town I'm across the river on the other side of town. In my mind, I'm going to the dog racing side of town. All right, a memory of Tim League, Ireland, channeled through John Bryan. Michael Robbins down there in Georgia. How nice to have you aboard, sir. Uh, and I, and you actually might have ex Oh, I'm so glad you're here, Mike, because uh, I tell you, the thing I'm about to do, you might have actually been there. So, uh, uh, time for a little spoken word in the Celtic segment of a Celtic uh, episode. Um, Sometime around, I, I, I don't remember the exact year, but it was sometime probably between 2002 and 2004. Um, on a Thursday night at the Swananoa gathering, something really, really, really cool happened. And uh, I had to uh, kind of put down in words how I felt about it uh, a short time thereafter. And I, I honestly haven't picked this up in a number of years, but I want to read this to you because uh, I hope it captures the, the feeling of uh, another very wonderful moment in time. And, I, and again, thanks everybody for being here. Last Contra. Last Waltz. Dance Over. And then someone started a tune on stage which lit a spark and then all the musicians were still playing and then and then 
Well, where do you start and how could you forget? Two step dancers appeared from the vapors, a circle two and three deep formed around, the whole gymnasium feet stomping, hands clapping, musicians inspired are now on fire. And then one step dancer dropped away only to return. And between the two, they kept it going and going until you had to wonder what earthly force was keeping them upright. When they truly had no more, and the circle was by now three or four, lucky souls deep, and the reels were still ablaze, crackling and rising to the heavens, two more dancers appeared, athletic, acrobatic swing dancers. The reels worked perfectly for them by some miracle. Eyes fixed on each other's eyes, feet in the 1930s, and they no more than 20, tattooed, muscular, arched backs to the floor, bodies flying over shoulders, risking life and limb, crowd hollering. Why would any moral mortal musician stop at this point? The precise and entire reason you ever pluck a string, bow to bow, button to button, pushed down a key, strum to strum, finger to fret, drum to drum, was right there for your present and eternal reward. Suffice it to say there were more logs on the fire than ever. And the swing dancers gave way and a ballerina appeared graceful, swan-like, with flowing ribbons and flowing legs, and it was still reels, and it was still reels, and I'm not sure I believe it, but in all my previous life, my eyes and ears do not lie. The cane was useless without her, she said once, and it needed her now. And there was Margaret Bennett following it, following it to the musicians. And with the ballet dancers still in the middle, with the swing dancers back in the middle, with the step dancers back in the middle, and the crowd still circled round, bigger than ever, infused with an energy that can only be derived from God, alcohol, reels, and ancestral longings. An energy that at midnight couldn't continue, not for a minute, let alone 10, let alone 15, and by now it was pushing 20. Margaret sang, or was it the angels, or was it both? Gaelic mouth music. It was Miss McLeod's reel. The tune is familiar. The tune is a close friend. Maybe only our ancestors know all the words. And now everything was connected and everything is imaginable. And then it had to end. Tears, hugs, stunned looks of disbelief, hands shaking in wonder, jaws hanging in awe, recognition. Thanks, more tears, more hugs. And at that moment, all those robbers, all those that would be thieves of my hopefulness are ever incarcerated because it happened and because it is humanly possible. I will never be unhappy, I believe. So I am going to uh, play a little bit of the tune that Margaret was lilting. tune finds itself on all corners of the folk music globe.
right, thank you. Um, that tune, Miss McLeod's Reel, uh, made its way into Appalachia, uh, and it, it became uh, called Hop High Ladies. And my friend Fred Lail likes to call it Pot Pie Ladies, like it's the cafeteria women. So, uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much for the, for the kind, kind thoughts. And uh, um, thanks for being here. So, uh, I'm going to finish up now with a, a story that's perhaps a little more self-explanatory than some of the others. Uh, I lamented, uh, gosh, we're lamenting all pubs right now, aren't we? <laughs> but some of them I uh, haven't been able to make it, sadly. But uh, we used to have a pub in Raleigh that was called uh, Tuninog Pub. And I'll just say that uh, the rest of this is self-explanatory. Tuninog Pub had a beautiful floor Italian tiles from door to door To last for years They put them there But that's not where this story ends The crowd is forming round them, and the dancers gather too. They're, they're circling up and buckling up all their hard soled shoes. And as I was looking over it, I'm thinking all the smile, I'm thinking all the while. Will this be another year? The dancers wreck the tile. The dancers wreck the tile. The dancers wreck the tile. Ho! Turn it up, St. Patrick's Day, the dancers wreck the tile. That ho is for Big James Owen Odin. We used to do that all the time in his songs. And somebody said to James, you know, that's, that's really not a traditional Irish thing to do. And James wrote back to him on a message. It's a traditional James thing to do. It shut him up. All in their flashing outfit, their several dozen feet are showing what they're made of and they're bashing out the feet. Happen any moment, and they'll do it in great style. Just a matter of time before the dancers wreck the tile. Dancers wreck the tile. Dancers wreck the tile. Turning out St. Patrick's Day. I see it. The dust is all about. Tis remarkably similar in color to the grout. And a section that is three by four lays shattered in a pile. If it's here and it's St. Patrick's Day, the dancers wreck the tile. The dancers wreck the tile. The dancers wreck the tile. Ho!
Well, that does it for this time. I thank every one of you for being here. It's an honor. I'm now up to 40 original songs on the 12 episodes. I want you to know. Hi, Alice Backer. Hi, Sherry. So, uh, um, again, you know, thanks, thanks. And uh, if you hit the share button, an angel gets a pair of step dancing shoes. I guarantee it. Anyway, thanks. We'll see you next time.